Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday Tips with Kimberbell. I'm Kim Christofferson and I have to tell you, I am so excited about this week's episode because we're announcing a couple of changes with Tuesday Tips and I could not be more thrilled about it and I think you will be too. First of all, the first uh, change is the time. So it's still gonna be every Tuesday, Tuesday Tips with Kimberbell, but now it is Tuesday Tips at two, two o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Whatever that means for you in your neck of the woods, you know, uh, it'll change up uh, just about an hour earlier, but Tuesday Tips with two, at two, had a good ring to it. So that's the first change, but the second change, <laughs> are you ready for this? Someone we all know and love is coming back to Tuesday Tips with Kimberbell, and she is with us for the long haul for Tuesday Tips. Everyone, please say hello and welcome back to our good friend, Laurie. Hey, how are you? <laughs> there we go. Hi, Hi everyone. <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's good to be back. Oh my gosh, I'm doing like the happy dance right now. If I could like reach over six feet and give you a big uh, hug, I would. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness. Lori is one of my dearest friends in the whole wide world. Oh, and as you know, sweet. she retired. Oh, don't you cry. Don't you cry. I, don't you cry. <laughs> she retired first. <laughs> she retired. We, we knew that wouldn't last long, right? Oh, so, yeah, I know. She retired from Kimberbell back in August, was it? Uh, August, end of August, August end 27th. Of August, August 27th. Oh my gosh, it was a very sad day for all of us. And you know, I mean, for good reason, you want to spend some more time with your family and not have the crazy schedule, you know, of working uh, full time here. But <laughs> we just couldn't live without her. And I know you couldn't either. Yeah. So we convinced you to come back just for Tuesday tips. And that's give my us favorite all thing. The I missed good that stuff. the very most. <laughs> yeah, I did. I really so you're did. still you're semi retired. Yes. Yeah. 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 You get to have a, a fun day every week here at Kimberbell. Right. <laughs> what have you been up to? Oh, making lots of stuff <laughs> for yourself this time, right? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> wait, three Boulevard. A bench pillow. The so, Twilight Boulevard? Yes. Yeah, so oh if you've God. ever made those. <laughs> three? Three. <laughs> Loved it. It was so much fun. And one was for me? It may be. No. <laughs> you heard it. It's recorded. <laughs> okay. Three Twilight oh, Boulevards. And I yeah. bought another machine. <laughs> well, why not? You know, yeah. Just collect them, right? Yeah. Collect them like candy. <laughs> it's been fun. I've, I've made a lot of other quilts and stuff as well. Yeah. but. Um, and I learned how to use my serger. Good. Finally. So, yeah. Had yeah, some time been, to do that. It's been a very productive few weeks or oh a few months. Gosh. I guess it's been a few months. Yeah. So. Yeah. Family's good. Yeah. Yeah. They're all doing well. We're going to have a family connection here soon. Yeah. Her son and my niece are getting married next spring. So excited. We're so excited. So we'll still be, you know, yeah. like besties, but related, related. to now Isn't somehow. that crazy? I love it's that. Pretty awesome. Well, Lori. I know a lot of people out there are gonna be so happy to see you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back for Tuesday Tips with Kimberbell, but you're actually gonna have Lori here a lot more often. Oh. So anyway, you always give good tips on sewing and machine embroidery. She is a, a, a powerhouse of knowledge for sure. Oh, thank so, you. Yes. I'm so excited to share yes. today's tips. Yeah, Just so with started. that being said, guess what? I'm gonna leave you guys <laughs> for, for just for now. And uh, you know, I'll be back another time. Uh, but this is now Tuesday Tips with Kimberbell with Lori, and I'm gonna let you take it away. Thank All you. Right. All okay, right. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Bye everyone. Air hugs. That's I know all we can do. <laughs> Good to see you again. You too. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. So to start with, I am really, really excited to share with you today. Um, these zipper pouches and these are a new zipper pouch blank that Kimberbell has designed and I love these and they come in these two different sizes there's the small and the large and it comes in different colors and different textures and you're gonna love the textures that it comes in so there's a velveteen and there's a felt and right here I'm gonna show you kind of a little bit of both so these top two are colors that the velveteen comes in 
and right here is the color of the felt. So if you can see that, it's kind of uh, maybe harder to see the felt texture, but you're gonna love both of these and they come in different colors and you'll get to see all the colors as we go through the tips because I have one of every color so you'll be able to see that and along with the zipper pouch blanks there are two new design sets that actually were designs that were made for these zipper pouches however you can use these on any blank like you can use them on a tote bag on a sweatshirt on our baby uh, body suits you can use them on a pillow you can make all kinds of things with these two designs and on these two designs are actually the instructions for making the zipper pouch or for finishing the zipper pouch and how you would center them how you stitch on them and how you finish the zipper pouches so i want to show you kind of a step-by-step -step run through of how you would do that but i do want you to know on the back side of this there is a link and you'll find it on the packaging you'll find that there's a link to the Kimberbell website where you can also find more information on how to center these and use them with other projects because the sky is the limit on these you guys it's amazing you can do just about anything so since Kim's gone I'm going to slide around just a little bit more here so that I can actually access this workspace and I'm excited to share with you what I found when I was stitching these out, some of the things that helped me, all right? So first, you pull it out of the package, and it's just really fun, but you'll notice that there's four layers. There's a front, a back, and there's two linings, okay? And I love that it already comes with everything, including the zipper already sewn in. So the first thing that, that you'll do is you'll locate your front this is going to be the front because my zipper pull is on my right hand side all right and that way i know this is the front of my pouch what i'm going to sew so the very first thing you're going to do is flip that over so you have the back side of your front part of your pouch and you're going to iron on a fused uh, uh, well it's a fusible woven stabilizer now this isn't in addition to the other stabilizer that you will use in the hoop this is just to secure this so that it stays nice and solid for you. Now you will, that will be hidden with your lining. Okay, so your lining will cover that. So that's a good thing. All right, and it on the instructions it does say, mention that you should be using and on the back of the package as well, that there is a Kimberbell fusible woven stabilizer. So, and those is, that is a Kimberbell line that will be coming out very soon. You're gonna love that. All right, so to start with, the first thing that you do is you're actually gonna measure the width. You're gonna find the center, which I've already done. And then I take my ruler and I lay it right up against the zipper because the zipper is also gonna be your other square line. So between that and this dot, you'll know exactly where to draw your line. Now it's important that you use a water soluble marker and the reason or pen and the reason for that is you're going to iron the next step and the next step that you iron you don't want to use a friction pen or you'd iron it right away um, you could use chalk as well if you are a chalk user if you like chalk the next thing you're going to do is turn this over and you're going to flip this up so that you can iron this and you have a crosshair all right now when i line this up i this is one of the tips that i like to do I line my zipper teeth here and my zipper teeth here on the same line, right there, so that when I fold this up, I can see that it's square on the bottom side. Because um, sometimes this felt, you know, felt has a little tendency to move sometimes. So I wanted it to be a nice even line from here to my zipper to make sure that that was parallel. So that's why I line my zipper up right down the teeth right down the middle of the line. And then when I fold this up, I make sure, see it's a quarter of an inch over here and it's a quarter of an inch over here. That way I know that that's exactly square. Now that's important on about anything that you're going to hoop, okay? You want to make sure that you hoop it square so your design comes out square on your, um, whatever it is you're making. All right, so this was the squaring uh, file that we were talking about that you can find on our website and it's available to anyone that goes to this link. 
And what it is, it just simply stitches an X right in the middle of your hoop. Now this is very great um, for lining this up. And the next thing you're gonna do is you can see I've got my one lining, two lining, and the back of my uh, pouch. And those are gonna lay over the arm, okay, of my hoop. So it's important that you lay it on this way, this direction. And my zipper is going to be down at the bottom towards me. So if you're viewing this, it might be upside down to you, but just picture the zippers towards you, okay? And then it's easy, you simply line up your fold and see this line, you line that up. Now the reason we used a marker, water soluble, and not just ironed it both ways, is so you could do this, watch this, you flip it over, and you can see, I, I purposely want you to be able to see this line. You can see the water soluble line through the back of the stabilizer, so you can see if it's lined up correctly or not. And I purposely have it uh, just off center. You can see that so you could see the line. You can just barely faintly see it probably on the camera. Oh, that's perfect. So now you can see that line. Can you see it's running parallel still, but I wanna move it down just a little bit. And the reason I wanted it off center just for viewing purposes so you can see that's the line that you want to line up with that stitch line. So you simply pull this off and this, since this is a sticky back wash away, you can easily flip it over and start over again if you need it to. So this time I'm actually gonna line it up on the line so that you can see what we're looking for, okay? And there we go. And now you can see that line actually lines up right with those stitches. That way you know it's exactly square. So important. Okay, the next thing that's important is the space um, and the direction of your design. So you're gonna pull your design in, whatever it may be, and please note that when you pull your design in, if it's facing that way, you wanna rotate it so it's facing towards the zipper of your teeth because you want the design facing up towards the zipper of your teeth. So it's always hooped on this side direction and some designs will come in with the top up here, some designs will already come in with the top here. So depending on where your top of your design is, make sure you rotate it to the top. Think of the zipper as your top of your design, all right? When you're finished stitching, you're gonna simply pull your design out. Here's a design that we're gonna work with. And this is the back side of one of the Velveteen zipper pouches, which is great. Um, and you can see I've torn away the extra stabilizer that was on the outside of this. I'm not worried with the rest of this because I really probably won't be washing or deep washing these zipper pouches. But I'm gonna show you quickly how you would pin this together. So I just wanted to show that one to you for the design. I'm gonna set that to the side for just a moment. I'm gonna show you how we would pin this together. So we're gonna pretend like this, this is my design on this pink felt, and the pink does come in the felt. So now we're gonna want to put our felts together, both right sides of the felts together, and both of the linings together, okay? Now right in the middle, you notice that we have a zipper. All right, so the first thing I like to do is let's fold the zipper, and I want the teeth to go towards the, the outside. So if you can see that, Right there is the zipper teeth. The zipper teeth are on this side and they go towards the front and the back of the actual pouch on the outside. Okay, very important, okay? Now I've got that. The next thing I'm gonna undo, which is super important, is you're gonna unzip this because you gotta get into this pouch after we sew it shut, okay? So now that my teeth are facing this way, I want all of my teeth facing this way. So I like to place these on top of each other like that and then I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna hold that to make sure that these teeth are facing the correct direction. Now the reason I do that first is automatically, and if you can see right up here on this side, automatically, if I don't, which direction do those teeth automatically wanna flip? They flip in the opposite direction, right? So that's why it's really important before this is pinned down to make sure these teeth are going the correct direction. Okay, and I like to make sure the zipper is even so when I sew it in, it's very 
even. It comes out really even at the top. So that's that's another tip that I that I like to do. Okay, and now I'm going to come back here, and now that that is taken care of, now you know that you've got a good straight line here to start with, and I pin it in place. Now, as you can see, this pink one is really good and square, and that's because I probably haven't stitched on it yet, right? And you'll pin this outside, and you'll pin around this outside here, and then you're gonna sew, and I'll show you where you're gonna sew. Where you're gonna sew is you leave a three inch opening over here on your uh, pouch, this is the lining, and you're gonna sew all the way around. And if you need to, square it up a little more because when you stitch, it sucks it in just a little bit more on one side versus the other. So what I like to do, and you can see here, is I like to mark and make a mark so I have an exact square that I'm following so that my pouch stays nice and square. I like to use chalk. Um, you don't have to. You can use whatever marker you want, but I find chalk is very easy to follow. Like, look how easy that is to see, especially on these darker pouches. So that chalk line, I think, is really um, easy to see on these darker pouches. All right. Once you have sewn around it, you're going to cut off the zippers, which I've done on one side. I'm going to cut this one off on the other side. All right. And then you simply, and this is, might be the most confusing part, you flip the entire bag through that hole, the entire bag. And that is one thing um, that probably was, you know, it's mind boggling, but it's amazing. Once you've done it once, you're like, oh, I get it. I see why they do it that way. And I like to make sure that the corners are um, poked out there so that it's nice and sharp looking because it's really important that you do that with your pouch. All right, and then I would simply do the same thing up here at the top. Isn't that cute? This is another one of the designs from the Sweet and Snarky. Now, isn't that cute? I love this. And I love, love, love trimming too. <laughs> All right, so, and this is one of the velveteen pouches. Isn't that a pretty color? All right, and then the last step that you'll do is, now this one's been fully tucked out and the corners have been popped out and then the very inside of this, I have, um, you just tucked this um, that was left where the opening is, tuck it inside and you're just gonna top stitch. And I'll show you here. I just top stitched, I took it out a little bit closer to an eighth of an inch rather than a quarter of an inch just because my tuck, my, when I tucked it in, it didn't go as far in. So you just kind of want to catch that so that you don't have that flipping out. And then all you do is tuck your lining inside your zipper pouch and it's done. Look how easy that was. And I just love these. You can make these and you could do any kind of designs that you want. I mean, you could take it from about anywhere. And I'm, I'm just loving these designs. I had fun making all of these Sweet and Snarky and Blossoms designs. And it's just been a lot of, uh, I don't know, creativity. And I want the creativity juices flowing. So if any of you have seen these or started making them, please share. I would love to see what designs you've come up with and what designs you're putting on them. This, isn't that pretty? The butterfly one is one of my favorites. And the reason I did it in the white is it's got such beautiful embroidery work on it that you can just, you know, just be so creative with all the different colors and wash. People might ask, how can I wash? I don't know that I would wash a bag anyways, but you probably gentle or hand wash would be my recommendation. Spot cleaning if you need to and lay flat to dry. That would be my highest recommendation. Um, but we will let you know. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope that you had a lot of fun and I'm excited to be back with you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.